Even or Marcus here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video, and we have finally got Virtual Desktop. And if you didn't know, Virtual Desktop allows you to mirror your PC's desktop to your Oculus Go. So there's no more side loading, there's no more messing around with Steam Link or side loading apps and messing around with ADB and linking your Oculus Go to a PC, whatever. You will officially have a way to link your PC via an app on your Oculus Go, which will be available in the store this Thursday, 29th of November, for $9.99 or £7.99, you'll be able to officially be able to link your Oculus Go to your PC. Well, so what does that mean? That means you better use your Oculus Go as a monitor for your PC. You need a NVIDIA or AMD graphics card, preferable, but they say it's not needed, but I do have that in my machine. You need a good Wi-Fi connection, which will help a lot with your connection. And what then happens is you download an app on your PC. It's a very small little app. You download an app on your Oculus Go. On the app on your PC, you enter username. On your app on your Oculus Go, you boot it up, you find your PC, you click it, and it's done. It's that easy. And then you'll be able to actually use your Oculus Go controller to point like a mouse. And then you'll be able to use a con Bluetooth controller like this Bluetooth controller here, this GameSir one, or an Xbox One X controller with Bluetooth to be able to play PC games with a controller connected to your headset. So you could be in another room, away from your PC, linked up to it, been able to play the games off it, do whatever you want to do. So this opens up a massive amount of options for what you can do with your Oculus Go. If you've got a half decent PC, God, the, the, the options are endless. Because it streams the audio as well, you can have Spotify in the background of your Oculus Go while you're playing a PC game, while you're playing something else. Uh, Brilliant. You can't play PC VR games with via virtual desktop, but from a productivity standpoint, you could be editing videos in this, you could be doing your accounts, you could be doing whatever you want, you could be watching all sorts of YouTube videos, any sort of video platform that you can't currently get on the Oculus Go, You can and you can get on your PC, you just watch on here. Watch your own videos that are on your PC, on here. Control your PC remotely, on here. Brilliant. Let's get into the headset now. I'll show you the whole process and how to set it all up. It's super, super easy. And let's check it out and I'll go through a few of the options. Right, so here we are looking at my desktop, but let's go back one second. Let's go back to the uh, app itself. So if we have a look, I've got the app already installed here. So if you just go to the website, I can actually show you there, vrdesktop.net, you download the app, you can sort of see it's available already on Oculus Rift and other platforms on Steam, on Vive, but you basically need this orange button here. This downloads the app for your PC. It's PC only, no Mac, unfortunately. So you can be able to link your PC to your Oculus Go. Once you download that, you install that. It does sort of say some sort of setups here. Here's an interesting thing. It says Oculus Quest. So hopefully we'll be getting virtual desktop pretty soon after the Oculus Quest launches. Nice. Uh, but yeah, so once we've got the app uh, launched, you can sort of see here it is here. It's a super small little app. You input your Oculus username. Mine is Romarcus. So if you want to add me as a friend, by all means. But you can enter that in there. That then pairs that with your headset. Uh, you can choose to have the program start up with Windows when you boot it up. I don't. You can choose to mute your speakers, which means your PC speakers will be muted. So no sound will come out of those. The sound will only come out of your Oculus Go headset. Bargain, I love that. And lock your computer on disconnect. So if you take your headset off and you lock your, um, your headset, it'll lock your PC as well. Nice little feature, but I don't need that. So once that's up and running, you're sorted. Then in your Oculus Go headset, you just come in here. You'll be presented with this screen here under computers once you boot up the app and your PC should appear here. So as long as you're on the same network, you've got the app installed on your PC, app installed on your, on your Oculus Go, you should see that. You click it, then just give it a few seconds and it boots it up. There's a few things just to go through here. Some settings, you can choose to auto connect. So if you've got the app running on your PC, you can automatically, once you go into the app on your Oculus Go, automatically connect. Bye, one of that. Use optimal resolution. Basically means it'll change your PC resolution to match your Oculus Go. Because if you're using your Oculus Go, why push your PC any harder than it has to? Because it's not going to benefit in any way. You might as well drop it a little bit, make it run a little bit smoother. Um, emulate gamepad on PC, which is essentially so you can use your gamepads in games. So when you boot up games, you can use your control pad rather than your sort of keyboard or mouse or anything like that. You can still use your keyboard or mouse. If you're sat right in front of your PC, you can still use your keyboard or mouse. Absolutely. But when playing games, you'll probably want a controller, but depending on what the game is. Environment quality basically just means lowers the sort of background here. I've got it set to black at the moment, but you can set that to low, medium, high. 
Video frame rate sort of just increases and decreases the quality a little bit. Uh, changes the pan width. You can see, you'll see we've got eight megabits per second going down there. Some dynamic, dynamic lighting options. Audio background music when disconnected. So when you're not connected to a PC, you've got that running on your headset. It'll play some music. I've turned that off. We don't need any extra music, but it's a nice to have an option. Uh, advanced options allow custom orientation in all environments. So we'll go through some environments in a second, but you can essentially kind of have like different cinema ones or whatever. In a black environment, you can actually lean back and have it on the ceiling. Uh, but if you want to kind of enable that, that means like if you're in a cinema one and you lie back, you can have the cinema screen on the ceiling. A little bit weird, but if you want to do that, you can do that. You can limit your frame rate to 60 frames per second, which I've done just to kind of help with sort of power management while I'm recording at the same time. And blue clock rates, which is good for if you're streaming or recording, it basically pushes the Oculus Go a little bit harder to make it nice and smooth. You've got that turned off. It does become a little bit juttery for the person using the headset, um, but you turn that on while you're streaming or casting and it'll go back to being smooth again. If you're not casting or, or if you're not casting or streaming, you don't need that. You know, just turn that off, that's fine. And we'll just keep the CPU clocks a little bit lower. Uh, that's pretty much that for that. You do have some little environments here. So you have the black void, you have the gray void, we have the purple nebula, we do have space sky, that's pretty cool. Uh, we have home cinema. So this is two seats with some bottles of wine and an iPad uh, with a pretty cool setup there. We have a home theatre, slightly bigger screen, bigger, fancier chairs. There's some comfy looking chairs there. Uh, we can go to dark cinema, which is just like a normal cinema, but nice and dark, nice big screen. We can go to auditorium, which is a bit more spaced out. Once again, even bigger screen. And then finally, we can go the complete opposite and go computer room and have a computer monitor in front of us. So if you wanted a cool looking room like this, you can do. And you have a PC monitor here. You could essentially put your keyboard and mouse in exactly these positions. Although it doesn't have a mouse. Where's this mouse? That's weird. But anyway, I prefer Black Void. And for one of the good reasons is you can also sort of control how the screen looks and reacts. So some of these you can't actually change, but the ones that are kind of in voids and in, in sort of floating in environments you can. So Headlock basically kind of puts the screen kind of, so it matches slowly where you're looking, which is handy. Uh, you can also sort of reset your view, so it puts it back where you want it if you're messing around. Distance is a strange one, because you move your controller backwards and forwards to make it closer and further away. But I don't know if you can see this, but it's not getting bigger or smaller, it's just getting closer. It's actually really quite trippy to do. But uh, we'll keep that far away, you just click again to kind of uh, set it. Curve, you can make the screen curved or not curved, just literally kind of um, moving your controller actually left and right is actually how it works. So we'll put a bit of curve on it, click it, and then size. We can make the screen literally loop around us, which is kind of cool, but we'll keep it sort of a, a reasonable size showing. There we go. And then whilst we've got computers, environment settings, videos, videos is coming soon, so that's obviously something that they're looking to add. And you can see top right hand corner, you can see your controller battery and your headset battery as well. So we've got 35% battery, 34, so we're gonna have to crack on with this review. So here we go, so here's your desktop. You can control it with your pointer, so the pointer becomes your mouse. The left click is your pointer. Uh, the touchpad becomes your right click. So if you need to right click on something, you just press the uh, touchpad and you get that option up. Here's one tip for you, is if you're sort of clicking on something and you need the uh, keyboard to come up, like a software keyboard, because the because it doesn't always come up, it doesn't work sort of perfectly. I don't think that's anything on the developer himself. I think he said in his video, Windows is Windows, and it doesn't always come up. But what you can do is on your sort of taskbar at the bottom, if you right click or sort of touchpad click, you can show touch keyboard button. And then if we kind of go down here, you've got a little sort of keyboard button to click on. So if you ever struggle to get the keyboard up, you can just press that little button down there to get the keyboard coming back up and down again. Perfect. You can flip between tabs, you can review your Twitter feed, uh, you can sort of just grab it or uh, touchpad it, uh, although saying that touchpad doesn't seem to be working right here. Uh, you can go to YouTube, you can watch some grid VR in full big screen. There we go, we can play with the sizes of that. We can have, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh what happened there? Oh, this is his video. I thought I, I thought we were in back a page then. Uh, so we can watch uh, face palm in massive screen uh, or any any environment we fancy uh, this is actually uncomfortably close uh, there we go let's move that away a little bit 
Uh, let's go back. Oh no, not back. You don't press back on the controller. You actually use the sort of on-screen controls. So any sort of website, any sort of app, any sort of thing that works on your PC will essentially work on your headset. So you can sort of use any apps like your Discord. What it doesn't allow you to do uh, in Discord, you can use the chat channels, but you can't use the voice chat channels. It doesn't pass the microphone through to the PC. Now that would be great if they do that. Maybe it's something that's coming in the future. Uh, hopefully it is, because that'd be great. Be able to use this to chat with in-game, perfect. But you can hear everything from in, in games and that sort of thing. Let's boot up a game so you can kind of see, for example, what they look like. So let's boot up, should we boot up Fortnite? I've tried Battlefield 5 as well. Works great with the controller. Let's boot up Fortnite. Let's play a little bit of Fortnite, shall we? So it's now booting up. You can sort of see it's got all the same controls and things coming up that your PC would, which is handy. You can easily sort of jump to your keyboard, jump to your mouse if you want to. You can play your games with the keyboard and mouse if you prefer. You don't have to use a controller. I prefer a controller. I'm an Xbox gamer at heart. I'll be honest. I'll be honest there. But then you can still use your, you know, your touchpad and your touch controller to click on things. So you can, at the moment, go hand in hand. But because we've uh, selected those uh, options in that menu, so if we press back on our controller, we went into settings, emulate gamepad on PC, we can use our controller in PC. And look at the latency there. This is really good. Really, really well done. So let's play a quick game of Fortnite. Everyone's favorite one. Should get me an extra few views of people watching this. If I put this in my thumbnail. <laughs> but uh, it works really, really well. And I'm actually kind of really, really pleased with it. Because in the past, you tried to use big screen. One of my most popular videos is me playing Fortnite with big screen. But it was so laggy. It was practically impossible to play. Whereas this, jump, jump, jump. I can't, I can't feel any lag, any latency, any delay. It feels, and it looks good as well. It looks pretty spot on. I can't complain about how this looks. I mean, I've got a pretty beefy system, I'll be honest. I've got an AMD Threadripper 16 core piece um, CPU with a 2080 Ti graphics card. 64 gigs of RAM, so it's a bit, bit extreme, but uh, it's buttery smooth. I mean, I've got a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, which helps. There is, does seem to be a little bit of a glitch. Can I see with the controls down here? Look, they're switching between PC controls and controller controls. I don't know whether that's just virtual desktop or just the PC being weird. Maybe a bit of both, but it's hopefully something that can be sorted. It might just be that, you know, the connection to the control pad might be not perfect. I don't know. Let's uh, run down here. I want to run and get this box. This chest. Oh, can I get it? Da, da, da. What did I just grab? Some balloons? What was that? Oh, and for some reason, you can customize all your controls like normal anyway in, in like the menus. But pressing triangle and to switch weapons actually makes you jump at the same time as well. Woo. Up we go. So there we go. So Fortnite plays really, really well. And the same goes for every other game I've tried. They've been silky smooth. I've played Steam games. I've played Origin games for Battlefield 5. I was playing um, Super Meat Boy on Steam just to kind of see how it worked. All super, super smooth and worked really well. And as I say, if you want to use your keyboard and mouse, you can do. You know, if you kind of know where your buttons are, which most people do instinctively, you can do. There's nothing stopping you. I guess the great thing here as well is there are apps out there that allow you to duplicate your phone screen to your PC. You could then obviously see your phone screen on here or connect it for notifications and all that sort of good stuff. So I'm, I'm excited about this. This will make it so much easier, less hassle, accessing all the different stuff that you can get on PC. The options now are limitless. You can just do pretty much anything. I mean, and it looks good. It performs well. I'm recording and my headset's not that warm. How much battery have I got left? It said 34% earlier, it's now at 27%. That's not too bad. Um, I could always connect my USB power bank to my little Velcro strap on the side um, to extend my time or just have it plugged in like normal, whatever, because I'm not going to be moving around too much, am I? Working on my PC. So, hey, yeah, big, big thumbs up from the dev from this one. Very, very well done. And I'm super impressed. It's super, super silky smooth. And, you know, I don't, I don't think I can say enough good things about it, really. There we go, virtual desktop on your Oculus Go. As I say, opens up hundreds, thousands, infinite possibilities of what you can do with your Oculus Go now. If it runs on your PC, it'll run now on your Oculus Go. Brilliant. I can't, you know, 
I, I can't even begin to kind of think of the different options and things out there. Because at the moment, if you wanted to kind of duplicate your PC screen to your Oculus Go, you need to sideload the Steam Link app on your PC and then faff around with Oculus TV, only have kind of one way of viewing it on that one Oculus Go TV. This one, you've got the full screen. It's you know natively you know kind of produced and kind of built to work as best you can. The guy behind this is working super hard to make it kind of run as smooth as possible. So if you do have any feedback when you do grab this app and you think there's any issues or any problems, make sure you get in contact with them because they're super open to feedback. They have said things like uh, 3D videos, side-by-side -side content and that sort of thing isn't supported yet, but it is something on his shortlist. So it is something he wants to add. So hopefully that'll come at some point. Multiple monitors aren't supported. You only ever get your main desktop. Now he is looking to support multiple monitors, but not at the same time but give you some option to be able to flick one monitor to the other because the oculus go just can't handle two screens at the same time doing different things doing all sorts but he can hopefully at some point be able to allow you to flick screen to screen which would be quite good so you can easily kind of you know if you've got one screen set up and you're editing a video you can be editing it on one screen click a button flicks to the other one so you can review it and take a look at that sort of thing and flick back again i think that still works um it sounds you know it sounds like a fair compromise Maybe on the Oculus Quest when we get that version, we will have multiple desktop windows, multiple windows to have open at the same time. That would be nice. But I guess the good thing is, you know, because you've got your PC screen and it is your PC screen, you can side by side content. So one half can be one tab with uh, Facebook in it. One side can be a tab with YouTube in it. And you can be watching things and scrolling things at the same time. So don't think of it as a limitation. You can essentially make your screen even bigger. Things are very readable and it works very well. So I'm pretty impressed at the kind of possibilities I've been able to use this. You know, I can now sit on the sofa with my wireless keyboard and mouse and edit my videos over there on the sofa rather than have to sit here next to the PC. Brilliant, I can just leave this computer screen off and it's all sorted, you know, happy, happy days. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about virtual desktop, what sort of ideas and suggestions have you got for using it? Do you wanna see me playing some games in it? I'm happy to play some normal PC, flat PC games if you want to. Um, but let me know in the comments down below what you think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, that's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it if you didn't like it, but do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it and I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. That's me done, I'm out, have a virtual high five.